In this video, we're going to talk about the units of production depreciation method. So the units of production method is very different from the methods we've talked about before. So we've been talking about straight line, which is the easiest method. Then we had double declining balance, which is more of an accelerated depreciation method, getting more of the depreciation occurring in the early years of the assets use. And then we had some of the years digits depreciation, which is kind of a random arbitrary way to allocate the cost of the asset over its life. So all three of these methods that we talked about before, what they have in common is that we estimate estimate the useful life of the asset right so we estimate the useful life and so for example if we're using straight line and we say that it's going to be a five-year useful life for the asset what we're essentially doing is each year we're recording some depreciation whether the asset is used a lot a little or not at all right so each year we're taking 20 percent of the assets value and, and we're recording it as depreciation and by assets value I'm talking about the book value and not the fair market value but we've talked about that before so the idea is that over the useful life of the asset we're spreading the cost but the units of production method is different and it's different because we don't care about the estimated useful life of the asset at all what we instead care about is depreciating the asset as it's used to produce units right so for example, let's say that we are doing something where we found a sunken ship. Let's say we found a sunken ship that it's, it's in the ocean, it's the bottom, bottom of the ocean, it's got 10,000 tons of silver, right? Somehow we've identified this sunken ship and we say, hey, let's get a crane and we will haul up all of that silver, we'll haul it to the surface and then we'll turn around and sell it. So we're able to buy a crane, we, we buy a crane for $500,000. And so now that we have this money, or now that we have this crane, which has a residual value of $100,000, which basically means when we're done with this crane, we think that we could sell it to somebody else for $100,000, or maybe it has scrap value or something like that, right? So the residual value is, is $100,000, and the crane cost us $500,000. So the difference between these two is $400,000, and that, that's, that's the amount that we're going to have to depreciate over time. And so what we need to do with the units of production method is we need to come up with a depreciation rate. So our depreciation rate is going to be the amount that we need to depreciate, which is the difference between the 500,000 and the 100,000. And the reason that we take that difference is because if we think that when the asset, when we're done with the asset, it's still going to be worth 100,000, then we don't want to depreciate that 100,000, right? We just want to depreciate the $400,000 difference, right? Okay, so that is going to be our numerator. When we calculate the depreciation rate, we're going to have the 500,000 that was the cost of the asset, and then the 100,000 we're going to subtract of the residual value. Now we're going to divide that by the amount of tons of silver that we expect to extract, right? So we expect, let's just assume we think we can use this crane to get all of that silver. It'll get all 10,000 tons. So then we're going to divide this 500,000 minus 100,000, which is 400,000. We're going to divide that by 10,000 tons, which is the amount of units that we're going to produce, if you want to think about it that way. Okay, so 400,000 divided by 10,000 is 40. So $40 a ton is our depreciation rate. Now that we know the depreciation rate, as we haul t d uh, tons of silver to the surface, right? as we pull it up from the bottom of the ocean and we get that silver, as we're recovering silver, we can depreciate the asset. So if hypothetically in the first year, if we didn't recover any silver at all, then we wouldn't have any depreciation expense because it's as, as we produce uh, units, right? So it's not just as time passes. But let's pretend that we did recover some units in, in year one. So let's pretend that we recover 1,500 tons of silver in the very first year. So now we're trying to figure out, well, how much depreciation do we take? Well, what we're going to do Similar to other methods, we're going to debit depreciation expense, and then we're going to credit accumulated depreciation. But to get the amounts, we're going to take that 1,500, which is, this is the amount of units produced. If you want to think about it that way, this is the units produced. This is the amount of silver that we've recovered, right? So we've recovered 1,500 tons, 
and now we're, we we calculate our depreciation rate before was forty dollars a ton. So we just take that forty dollars and we multiply it by the amount of units that we produce, and that gives us sixty thousand dollars. So we're going to debit depreciation expense for sixty thousand, credit accumulated depreciation for sixty thousand. Now, if we now that's our income statement effect, right? So we'd have depreciation expense would be on our income statement and so forth. Now, if we want to look and say, well, what's the balance sheet effect of this? We would see that our balance sheet at the end of that first year, at the end of year one, if we were to look at the balance sheet, we'd see Crane for 500,000, which was the purchase cost, right? That was the purchase price of the Crane minus or less accumulated depreciation related to the Crane, which is 60,000, which we just calculated up here, okay? And then we would have the net val or the net book value of the crane would be four hundred and forty thousand dollars. Now in year two, in year three, in year four, each year we're going to go and say, well, how many tons of silver did we bring to the surface? How many tons of silver did we get in year two? And then whatever that amount is, we're going to multiply it by forty dollars a ton each year. We're going to take the amount of the tons of silver times the depreciation rate of forty dollars a ton. But we stop. We're going to stop when this value here, when this four hundred forty thousand, when the book value gets to a hundred thousand dollars we're going to stop and why because that is our salvage value we're not going to depreciate the asset below a hundred thousand dollars so we base ultimately over the life of this asset we will end up taking four hundred thousand dollars in depreciation because we're going to get down to our salvage value of a hundred thousand that's the goal